Hi everyone, Barnaby here from Electric Car Converts. This is our full bolt-in plug-in Defender kit. So let me talk you through it. This is a TD5 behind me, um, so it's a 1999 car. We're doing a whole build series on this car where we show you us building each of these components. But we had this car driving about a week ago and we've stripped the whole thing out to show you what the kit looks like. So thanks to the mechanics and the team for actually getting all this stuff out um, because it's pretty annoying taking it all out just for a video, but that's what happens when you work for me. Um, so everything you see here will bolt into this car um, and will give you 300 horsepower worth of Tesla motor, 55 kilowatts worth of battery for let's call it 120 to 140, 150 miles of range, super fast charging, all the cooling systems, all the wiring looms, all the absolutely everything down to the last bolt that you need to bolt it all together is included in the kit. Um, the kit can ship worldwide and it can go, we can make them for all defenders, um, as long as it's not like a 130 lifted crazy thing, um, in which case we'd have to redesign a few things. This kit will fit in the car. Um, this is a specific iteration for the TD5, so the only differences are a couple of motor mounts and things like that. But other than that, everything you see here is what you need to make your Defender electric. So, starting at the very front, at the beginning I suppose, we've got the Rad Pack cooling system. Two radiators, one cooling the motor, one, co one cooling the battery, one cooling the motor. Um, various pumps, header tanks, pipe work is all on there. We've, we're so sort of pedantic about this, we even know exactly how long each pipe is. So you don't even have to cut any pipes. It's literally take that Jubilee clip, plug it in under the box when it's all mounted up and that's all you need to do. Um, coming further back now, we've got the battery box. One battery box in this build. We decide that 55 kilowatts is plenty in a Defender. I've explained this in other videos, but what it basically means is you're not taking this car up and down to Manchester or to wherever. You're sort of pottering around town, enjoying it off-road, using it in London. Um, so 100, 150 miles is plenty. The one day you do want to go a long way, that's the far, uh, this is the fast charging plug. Um, you can rapid charge this box in about half an hour, 40 minutes um, from 20 to 80% while you get your McDonald's or whatever from the services. Um, so on this box we've got AC charger, we've got the DC-DC, we've got the throttle mechanism on it, but I'll take you through that in a moment. Moving further back, we've got Tesla motor. So this Tesla motor is out of the back of a Model 3. Um, it usually sits sideways in a Tesla running the two back wheels. We've twisted it, put it in the middle of the car, which is sort of there, where the gearbox used to be, running power to the front diff and the back diff down these prop shafts, which are also custom made, custom everything, balance, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that sits there. Things like the mounting brackets that they sit on here, and all of these brackets and parts are all, have all got the bolts in them. So you can see you have every last washer, nut, bolt that you need to connect it. And the reason they're such a strange shape is because they go through the original chassis holes. So you don't have to drill a single hole in the chassis of your Pride and Joy car. They will bolt through original holes. And that is thanks to Toby on our CAD computer and our fancy um, CNC plasma cutter that makes things like that. Um, so. That mounts for the motor. Then little things a little bit further back, you've got your charge socket. Um, so there we can see we've got, this is type two because this is a UK car. We can make them on type one charge sockets for the American market. And then you've got DC charging underneath. So that's your CCS, super fast, rapid charging. Um, you see them dotted all around the place now. Um, most famously, the Tesla superchargers use this plug. We're still waiting to hear from Tesla if we're allowed to actually charge these cars on the Tesla supercharging network. It's very soon, it's not quite yet, but by the time you get one, hopefully we're in business with that. And then little things like these at the back, new brake calipers, whoops, new brake calipers on the rear because they've got a handbrake system built into them. Obviously you take the gearbox out of a Defender, that means you're also taking the handbrake out of a Defender. So, 
These are all for custom fabricated bracketry that allows you to put them on. Even the brake lines are done, made off you exactly the right length. They go to the T-junction at the back. Um, so we make this as simple as possible. Um, so the last little bit is a flat floor there. Um, so you can actually sit someone in the middle of the, two, of the two front seats and they can put their feet flat on the floor, which is quite nice. So we'll leave that there. We've built this kit over hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, refining it and getting it right in a couple of different cars before sort of putting it into kit form. Um, but the, the idea behind this kit is that it goes to America, it goes to South Africa, it goes to wherever um, and can be installed there with our you know, instruction manual basically but also with our tech support on the phone, or if you really want, I can fly an engineer out to you and help you put it into your car, which some people do opt for, um, just to make you know a little bit easier. It's absolutely completely done. It's completely plug and play. Um, I haven't got the 12 volt wiring loom out here today because I'm gonna do that in a separate video, but everything just plugs into plugs all over the, all over the kit. For example, those plugs there, there's a wiring loom that goes between the box and there. Um, so, it's pretty exciting. We're really excited to have made this um, in a kit form. We're going to get it back in the car probably tomorrow. So now let me take you through each of the individual components in a bit more detail and we'll go on. So, okay, let's go through the kit in a bit more detail then. We'll start at the very, very beginning and I'm going to talk you through literally every single part. There's no secrets with me. People will know that. Um, but I'm going to show you exactly how it's all made so you know what you're in for if you buy a kit from us. Start from the very front. This is actually an original part. Land Rover people will recognize it. But the reason it's out here is because it's been repowder coated um, and set up with these custom mounts that we've, that we've cut to hold it all in. And these are what hold the rad pack in. Um, now the radiator pack is the first thing that we actually um, that, that we built um, and it is an original frame that we cut down um, and then repowder coat once it's fitted our CNC plasma cut aluminium frame and the two radiators are in there. These little bits Defender people will also recognize but we've actually made them ourselves, rebuilt them and they slot over like that and just hold the radiator in the front there so it's all rubber mounted. Underneath is another mounting system that's also made by us um, that goes into the original holes which are, well the original sort of mount points which are there on the Defender chassis. Um, so it literally is a case of plugging this onto those rubber mountings and putting the top bits in and then you've got the rad pack. On the back of the rad pack here we have got two header tanks. Um, two radiators, two fans on the back of them, a whole load of pipe work that connects it all up, um, all in 19 mil pipe, so super high flow, you can get plenty out of them. The reason that there are two is that one goes to the battery pack, which is this one, with a little sort of slow pump, and then the other side goes to the motor, which is the much longer pipe work, it's gotta go all the way to the back, and the pump for that one is right down the back of the car, because it's as close as possible to the motor. It's super fast, super high power. So in here, it's sort of like froth is up, froths up and gets really excited. But that's important because that means that plenty of coolant is going around the car. So that is the rad pack. Um, in terms of what you need to do in, in installing the kit is you plug the two fans in into the wiring loom, which I'll show you separately, and another plug into the bottom of that pump there, which are all the right length, all made off, all crimped, all done. It's literally a case of plug it in um, and the pipes are all exactly the same exactly the right length so we know the distance between there and the motor for example it's not that hard but it's little things like that that I think make our kits absolutely bolt in plug in there's nothing you need to do not even cut down a pipe um, so that's rad pack up the front then we move on to batteries so in terms of batteries we're going to start with the frame this is our battery frame um, you'll have seen this in our fabric in our, I think one of the episodes about fabrication. Um, it's super nice, made out of, well, it's very heavy. It's made out of like five mil steel or something like that. Um, and it sits on the front cross member um, of the original chassis. 
And then these two mounts are what mounted onto the two engine mounts, which I'll show you here. So onto there. So you can see where they sit on the original engine mount there. Um, now, I'm not kidding when I mean that I give you every single bolt you need. So you don't even have to go and find the right size, shape, length bolt because it sounds easy. That's not always the easiest thing in the world. So that's the frame. And then a, a cross member that Land Rover people will recognize, but we, re, we remake them so we can put the holes in the right place. But that is where the back of the battery box frame sits on. So that's battery box framework. This is battery box. Um, you'll have heard me talk a lot about this thing, but um, it's ultimately 55 kilowatt hours. Um, so plenty of range, plenty of storage, etc. Um, it's got the charger mounted on the front there. So that's an AC charger. So you could good to plug into lamp posts or your pod point at home or whatever. You're also good to plug into a three pin socket on the wall, for example. So that will charge this quite slowly, but it doesn't matter. It's like an overnight charge. That's mounted on the box, so you don't have to mount it anywhere. It makes life easy. Um, inside the box are LG modules, um, which were sort of destined for a VW ID series. Um, so they're inside. And on the top layer, we've got the BMS. We've got the contact to circuit, contact to controller, CCS controller, all kinds of electronics done in there, um, as well as your high voltage disconnect. So if anything goes wrong, pull that out like you crash or whatever. Um, so all built into the box, all safety tested and lovely. Um, on the sides we've got, that's a data connector. So if you need to plug it into the computer, well, to be honest, if I need to plug it into the computer, we'll do that. Um, that's high voltage down to the motor. This side, we've got high voltage down to the charge socket. So that's for your DC rapid charge. Um, and then come around to the back, And on the back of the battery box, we have another mount that obviously is CNC cut. We've got your DC-DC on the back there. DC-DC is what converts 450 volts into 14 volts, which charges up your 12 volt system. So things like your wipers, your headlights, your what else? Indicators, etc. That's all done by this. Um, you can see the HV loom on it. So just, you know, little tiny wires, all already the right length. They just need to be well, when this kit is officially done, it will be sort of P-clipped and nicely secured there. And then we've also got a throttle on the back. Um, now, the reason we've put the throttle mechanism here is because it means you don't have to make any kind of mounting or modification to the throttle in the car. You literally take the, the throttle cable that's in there, you pull it, plug it in there, bolt it on there, and then when you move your foot, this will move, which is what talks to the motor and makes things go better. Well, go fast, go slow. Um, other than that, there's coolant, as you can see, it's dripping out. There's coolant on the, on the bottom. So you plug in that plug, well, that tube to the bottom, um, and that's running coolant up and down through the battery pack, just to keep things equalized and, and happy, really. Um, so that's battery box. That's sort of, you know, a bit of a main event. Very nice thing, that. Um, and moving further back, let's talk about the other main event. event. Um, now, I've spoken a lot about Tesla motors in the past. This sits in the gearbox tunnel and every mount is absolutely made for it. It's got the bolts in it, crucially. Um, that one sits there, for example, and sits on one of the cross members under the car. So that's really easy. Um, in here are new gearings. Um, so it's a slightly different ratio, which means that we can get crazy top speeds out of this, but also get good acceleration. You can't use the original gear sets in these because they're designed for running the wheels directly, not, run, not running differentials and props. Um, so we've also got couplers on them. So come in and have a look at that there. Um, there's, a, there's a coupler that fits, well, our Defender prop shafts, which are these big things, which we know the exact length of them because we tried and tested it. Um, they're balanced, they're the right angle, they're the right everything. Um, so you literally need to, it will come like this. All you need to do is bolt that to, to your diff. Um, so should be quite easy. The HV lines going to it are all the right length. They're pre-made they're pre onto a plug. Um, so they're ready to go. And the water pump, which is there, you know, I said the water pump was down the back somewhere. Um, that's there, all, all at the right weird angles it needs to be. 
that you just need to plug it onto there when that's all bolted up underneath. Um, so motor wise, you, you, you're going to need some sort of um, gearbox jack to, to get it up. You know, the same gearbox jack you use to take the gearbox out of the thing, you need to put it back in. Um, on top of that goes the flat floor. That sits about here. You can see where it's just about indents on the motor um, there. So that's all got the right holes in it, ready to go. You can use the bolts from your original um, floor mounting system. Well, I guess the gearbox tunnel um, to mount that in. What have I missed here? You've got all the mounts, got all the everything. Ah, oh, I've missed power steering. This is the power steering unit. Um, it plumbs directly into the original power steering box, so all the lines will be provided. You don't have to go and get a um, hydraulics man to do your, to do your pl um, hydraulic plumbing. And then this wiring loom will plug into the main loom, and that mounts on all original holes in the chassis. Um, they're actually the ones that hold the steering box on, so it's a nice little standalone unit running electric power steering. Let's keep that there. Moving further back, um, what's sort of next on the list? We've got calipers. Um, it's the small things that you forget about when you're building an electric car like this. Um, things that we've obviously worked out over the, over the years. Um, but you lose a handbrake when you get a Tesla motor rather than a Land Rover gearbox. So these have got a handbrake built into them. New calipers, that's that lever. Um, the handbrake cables, my brake pads keep falling out. Um, the handbrake cables are all built into the kit, as are the normal brake lines, which go into original fittings on the Land Rover, so you don't even have to run new brake lines or anything like that. That's all ready to go. This mount is what holds those um, handbrake lines, so that all makes life very easy. Then you've got the charge socket. I've spoken about this um, before, but there's a little plate there that just connects it up to the original holes. Um, where the fuel filler used to be. So that nice little plate there sits over the socket like so, and then you have the bolts to push it into to the holes on the car. So it doesn't look like a lot when it's on the floor. Obviously it's a hell of a lot of engineering and very expensive parts um, that you can't really see. Um, ah, hold on, I've missed one thing. Gauges. You will also receive a dial cluster like this. So on here you've got miles per hour, battery percentage, amp draw, and battery temperature. That's all you know, on plugs, so you can literally just plug it into the main loom. Um, so that's ready to go back in once, you know, once, once the car is ready to go. Um, and then the other thing on the interior is the drive selector, so drive neutral reverse, which comes on a nice mounting plate, which we didn't want to take out of the car. Um, but basically, you just need to mount that in the dash. That's all that will be different in there, everything else is the same in terms of the interior. Um, so that is our Defender kit. We're super proud of it. It's going around the world. We're going to Arizona with it. Um, there's a lot of interest in this kit, as you can imagine. It's uh, very well priced at the minute at 46,000 pounds plus applicable taxes. In the UK, obviously we have VAT 20, 20%, which makes this a 55 grand plug-in kit. Prices are subject to change because we've got crazy demand for these kits and we won't be able to keep up. Prices are going up, etc., etc. Um, but ah, one other thing, heater. That's an original Defender heater box and it's now got a high voltage element in it. Um, so you don't even have to do that. All you need to do is mount it back in the car, plug it in and off you go. And you basically send us your old heater, heater matrix and, we'll, and we rebuild that into the next car. Um, or we just buy you a new one if, if that's easier and you're in America or whatever. Um, so that is absolutely everything, I think, that goes into these cars. There's going to be questions out there. Um, so ask me, ask me in the comments. Um, find my phone number, which is on our website, electriccarconverts.com. Um, there's also going to be all kinds of details and photos, etc., of the kit on our website. It's the new way to do electric conversions. We have so many cars in here and so much, so little space, let's put it, that it's easier to build a whole kit, get a car in and install it ourselves, or ship this out on two pallets um, across the world, really. 
It's really exciting time to be in electric defenders. These things are crazy fast, not 60 in five seconds. It's amazing, we love them. This kit's gonna go back in the Defender tomorrow. Um, I haven't decided yet, but I'll probably do a video of us showing you how we put it in, sort of step by step. Um, depends how busy we are, we're super busy at the minute. But um, I hope that gives you a good insight and it genuinely is plug and play. I hate it when people say, oh, here's a kit. And it's not a kit because you have to wire everything up and you have to make mounts and everything. This is literally bolt in, plug in, put the plumbing wires together. Um, if you have to do any of your own cable work or splicing or anything, pff, you won't. You know, it's not going to happen. Um, we call it idiot proof. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let's go over to our Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, head over to our website, give me a call. I'm always happy to help. Um, and Thank you.